Almost everybody knows Roger Federer, the tennis player, but few people know Roger Federer, the social entrepreneur, who started his own foundation in 2003. Well, we're reaching our eighth year now. Um, we're shy just a couple of days of our eight, eighth year in uh, in philanthropy. Um, so obviously, I've learned a lot, uh, but I'm still learning, of course. You know, I've had a very interesting time in the very beginning setting up the foundation. You know, um, taking charge in, in 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 a way, you know, of trying to be very precise in what I want to support in terms of education, kids in Africa, also include sports to it and so forth. So that was for me a big, um, a big step and then obviously every step of the way trying to generate more money, um, raise awareness, um, get the right team around me together so we can take a step-by-step -step approach and always improve and you know, be very critical also to ourselves how we can also just be the best uh, uh, foundation we can be. This modest profile suddenly got much higher on December 21st in Zurich. That's when the Roger Federer Foundation made a sudden impact on a very large audience. The match for Africa was unique. The first time the world's two best tennis players met in Switzerland. And it was a milestone. The match helped raise over 2.5 million Swiss francs for children in Africa. It's the biggest uh, single event that we have done uh, from a foundation standpoint. Um, again, not only from a raising uh, finances, but also from awareness. It'll be shown all around the world, different countries, in Asia, in the United States, North America, South America, obviously throughout Europe. So um, we have an amazing opportunity. And certainly, um, we will raise a lot of money for Rogers Foundation. And um, it's not just Roger giving his time and playing with Rafa, but it's also the people who are actually buying the tickets to show up in the Holland Stadium. The day before the match, Credit Suisse invited Roger Federer, who has been official ambassador of the bank since November 2009, to take part in a philanthropy roundtable. Roger Federer was one of three participants. Together they spanned the spectrum of philanthropy. A top tennis player, the head of development of one of the oldest microfinance organizations, and the executive director of a foundation that brings solar energy to the poor of the world. In spite of their diverse backgrounds, they all engage with venture philanthropy in some way. So what venture philanthropy adds is the entrepreneurial part. So all these institutions and foundations who go the way of venture philanthropy see themselves as true social entrepreneurs. They want to make an impact not just in a passive way, but they want to take ownership about the projects they support, make them successful. They act as entrepreneurs. Peter Heller supports activist celebrities as important players who tackle philanthropy in a practical way, like Roger Federer. The interesting thing is that he joins an event uh, and in this way he joins a movement which goes from traditional charity to venture philanthropy on to impact investment. So he's already made another step forward where we see that there is a world of taking risks, entrepreneurial risks, investing social capital in projects which requires much more than just writing a check. It's about going out there, as he explained to us, doing field trips in Africa and looking what goes well and what doesn't work. As more people become social entrepreneurs, they close the gap between benevolence and business. Microfinance expert Roy Jakobowitz is convinced that philanthropy, like any good investment, has the potential for profit. The thing that is remarkable about microfinance is its ability to operate in a business-like manner and yet also achieve social purpose. And uh, in the early stages of uh, microfinance, uh, philanthropy is abs and charity is absolutely needed in order to build up the programs, but the miracle of microfinance is that it can be financially self-sustaining, it can achieve large scale, and in this, and in this way help to relieve the poverty of millions and in fact hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Since its origins in the early 80s, Microfinance has seen an incredible development. 
The largest difference is reaching scale. When I began 16 years ago, we were, uh, the entire industry was only reaching 5 million people. Today, over 150 million people, poor people worldwide, have access to some kind of microfinance. Second was actually achieving this financial self-sustainability, building institutions that can become permanent sources of high-quality financial services for poor people. Um, and third, I think, was the fact that uh, we could bring commercial investors to become interested in this activity and successfully uh, bring them in and uh, maintain a, a social effort that would also be attractive to investors worldwide. As business opportunities in philanthropy multiply, the appetite for investment in this field grows specifically uh, in, in Switzerland and in Europe as a whole, uh, we have seen a tremendous increase in uh, questions and in demand for specific products uh, across or among the, the, the topic of philanthropy. I, I, I really believe that uh, the topic has been big, big in the US specifically, and it was a little bit less of a topic in, in Europe, but during the past two, three, five years, it has, there, there has been significant growth. But how do philanthropic institutions view the role of a global financial player in the field of social responsibility? Well, I think there's plenty of space for um, an internationally distinguished bank in supporting this sector both by providing capital, informing their clients about the opportunities to invest in venture philanthropic institutions, foundations, projects, and as well in supporting us with the expertise that a bank like Credit Suisse has in hedging risks. This is an important part where all the knowledge and know-how you have is extremely useful for us to run our projects well. Not every commitment to philanthropy produces a financial return. However, they all have intangible benefits, as Roger Federer emphasizes. Well, just a good memory seeing that uh, the help I'm giving to the project in Ethiopia is, is really also working, that the kids have a place really to go to school, um, that the, the schools we have renovated are there, um, the fountain we uh, created for them is there too, the kids are doing sports and so forth. So. I take back great memories from uh, happy children to see me, uh, to maybe also have a face to someone who supports their project. And I hope to go back soon, of course.